Well, President Joe Biden's poll numbers are on a downward slide as crisis after crisis, disaster after disaster, all pile up at the White House. Robert Cahaley is a respected pollster who runs the Trafalgar Group, and his polling was one of the few that actually got it right. He's got an inside look as to why so many Americans are so frustrated with this president. Would you please welcome to the show, Robert Cahaley. Robert, good to have you here. Thank you. The poll numbers for President Biden were sky high when he was first inaugurated back in January. And they have plummeted to really disturbing lows. And if I were on his staff, I would be surprised and shocked that they're down to under 37% in some polls. What has happened? You know, for a while, Biden had this phenomenon going on where he was more personally popular than were his policies. Kind of the inverse Trump effect. Yeah. Uh, and so for a while, it, even though his uh, policies on the border, uh, um, the canceling the pipeline, they weren't that popular, but people still saw him as a sympathetic figure and, and some you know, didn't actually think he was that much in charge. But after Afghanistan, we saw his approval ratings drop to meet the approval of his policies. And they never came back. I mean, he, he took responsibility for a shipwreck. And <laughs> from that moment on, it, they were tied together. There wasn't that separation anymore. And we, that separation that used to exist where people thought he was a good guy, but had made some mistakes and maybe wasn't completely in charge, is just eroded. And now he is literally feeling the unpopularity of his policies every single issue, one at a time. Robert, I happen to know from being in politics that if your numbers really tank, it's really much harder to get them back than it was to get them up there to begin with. What's the likelihood that this is all going to turn around and by the time of the midterms next year, he's back on top? Oh, I don't, <laughs> being on top, I, I don't see him being on top. Uh, I, I do know, and this is something we experienced in Georgia when the big debate during the Georgia runoff was about whether to give the $2,000 or the $600. Those who came out for the $1,400, that motivated a lot of voters to vote for him because people like getting checks in the mail. Nancy Pelosi yeah. knows this. She blocked yeah. the checks coming before the general election. So if he can successfully spend a bunch of money and put money in people's pockets, they can forgive a lot. Mm. So that's why this fight's so important. Uh, people forget that the money that he's giving away isn't his. It belongs to all of their friends and relatives and to their grandchildren. And so, great-grandchildren. And great-grandchildren in this case, that's for sure. Why does your polls reflect more accurately what's going on? And I'm not trying to flatter you. It's just a fact. Trafalgar polls were way ahead of everybody else. You use a different methodology than the traditional pollsters. So explain that in layman's terms as to why you've modernized the mechanism. Well, and that's just it. It's, it's got to be modern. Uh, we, you know, we refer to what a lot of the other groups are doing as the Pony Express pollsters. <laughs> People are no longer sitting around in the parlor waiting on the phone to ring for a political survey. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, honey, well, this is a political survey. Let's stop it. Nobody does that. So right now, when, 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 you, when you get a phone call or something like that, you know, people are having dinner. They've got kids that are screaming. They're, they're driving home. They don't have time for it. And so these guys are still out there pitching these 20, 30, 40 question surveys. Some of them are 100 questions. Whoa. So average people don't take them. So what you end up having those surveys represent is the opinion of people who are on the extreme of the right or the left or worse yet, people who are bored. <laughs> but <laughs> average people don't have time for this. So yeah. our first secret, which isn't a secret, is short surveys. We want you to be done with our poll in three minutes. We want to tell you up front you're going to be done in three minutes. We also give people other ways other than just a live phone call. You know, we'll, we'll give them an, an email, a text, and our texts are like text back and forth. And so we know that people answer them a day after. They answer part of them, like some of the text ones, they'll answer one day and answer the next one. I think there are probably people who, use, who answer our polls in the bathroom. Now, we don't ask them that, but I'm pretty sure it's true. <laughs> I'm glad you don't. That's probably best. They might even do them during the commercials of your show. You don't know. As long as they don't do them during the show exactly. itself, we can handle that. You know, I'm curious. I want to ask the audience, how many of you would take a call from a pollster if it was going to take you 30 or 40 minutes? I don't see a single hand. I guess none of these folks are bored. <laughs> Good. How many of you, though, would be willing to take a three-minute poll if you knew it was only going to take that long? 
There's, that's why Robert's polls have proven to be more accurate and reflect an honest assessment of voters. What in your polling right now is showing up as the biggest thing Americans are concerned about? Well, you know, it was funny. It, it started with our Virginia polls is this idea that paying people not to work has screwed up this economy. Mm. People but, believe that then. They, they're seeing it. Okay. Absolutely. I'm and, happy to hear that. And, and the thing is, the governors who got out front and stopped that money, we saw immediate shoot, shoot up in, in their approval rating. And the governors who sat back and let it continue, those are the ones that, that, that their states continue to suffer. And people will see that correlation. They, they see the idea of the worst thing you can do to America is destroy our work ethic. And people are, are seeing that. They recognize that part of the problem is when you're paying people not to work, it's it, one, they get pretty picky about coming back to work. Yeah. And, and they're very hard to please and that they, they're, you know, giving you a list of demands and that they, you, you've destroyed their incentive. You've destroyed everything involved. And, you know, that's why we have all these problems. That's why, you know, we built all this entire shipping system that depends on getting things from Asia and people don't want to work and unload anything. And so you get, you get in trouble. You know, Robert, you've given me a great deal of hope between you and Charles Mizrahi tonight. <laughs> I've already come to see that there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about the long-term future of America because people do have that sense of common sense about them. I know you'd like to keep up with uh, what Robert is doing. I certainly do. I, I find him the single most uh, impressive person out there polling and getting opinions. And you can keep up with Robert by following him on Twitter at Robert Cahaley. Also, check out the trafalgargroup.org for all the latest opinion polls.